Hey guys, uh, today we're looking at the 1968 Mustang Fastback. It is a pro touring car, and much, much so. Um, it is the car where um, the movie Gone from 60 Seconds took inspiration to build the uh, Eleanor car. Very famous, if you've ever seen the movie, it's a great car. This car has a lot of the same styling cues. Um, what I'd like to do before I start to get into the details of the car is uh, for Colin here that's helping me out, just to do kind of like a pan and scan around the car real slow, and I'll walk you with it. Um, this is considered, you know, most people just call it a muscle car. It's technically not. This is a pony car, meaning that it is a little bit of a smaller car compared to a lot of the um, bigger muscle cars. If you want to look at that Challenger behind it, you'll see it in a second. That is a full-on muscle car, meaning a full-size car with a big engine in it. Pony car is a little bit easier to live with, a little bit easier to park. Uh, and um, in a case of a stock car, a guy like me, I'm 6'4", 220 pounds, it becomes a little tricky to get in and out because they were built when, you know, I guess people were a little bit shorter. Uh, in this case, the car has been completely redone inside and outside, so um, it really does not have that quote-unquote problem. Lots and lots of upgrades. What I'm trying to show you now is just the lines of the car and the way it looks. You know, it has an amazing eye. And keep in mind, you're seeing it in here and it's surrounded by a lot of other cool cars. Imagine this parked, you know, in your regular parking space where, you know, at work at the office at the grocery store and it's going to be surrounded by a sea of gray and black cars. And this thing, you know, just because of the paint and just because of how it looks and the shape it has, will just pop. This rear end, my personal opinion, is the most beautiful thing to ever come out of the 60s. These, like, still had a little bit of the fin action going on, all the trim, the tail lights. It's just a gorgeous, gorgeous line for the car. Um, let's just finish the spin real quick. And maybe when you get here, Colin, if you can get the reflection of the other car in the quarter panel, it'd be great because it shows the mirror-like finish. And so, just so we're clear, when you can see what the other tire, what the other tire's, tire's brand is, you know that you are looking at a very, very well done paint job. Um, and this is achieved by applying three to four layers of paint followed by four or more layers of clear coat which are then wet sanded and buffed to get this finish where you run your finger and it's, it's literally like glass. It is, you, you cannot feel the difference between where the white has been painted and the uh, red. <laughs> this, by the way, is a good point. These are painted on. So first they paint the red and then they add the white and then they clear coat the whole thing. So this is not a sticker that will come off when you power wash the car, if you wax it. A lot of times it will stay for as long as the car is around. New chrome, new bezels, new headlights, new mirrors, new doors, door handles. I mean, all the hardware in the car has been replaced. When you go into a build like this, you can expect that will last a long, long time in a sense that you won't get your car back in two weeks or three weeks, something you see sometimes on TV where they start out with a rusty car and you know, two episodes later, boom, the car is ready. That, that's TV. This is something that takes years. Typically, an average build is two years and I have no doubt that this car took the same amount of time. While we're in front of it, let's open the hood. One of my favorite parts of the build of the car. This is a 351 engine. It's a Ford engine to begin with. It's a it's not the original engine to the car, of course. This is um, a crate engine that has been worked for performance and reliability. So what you see here, you have, it's a mix and match of new and old, meaning as far as technology. The engine itself, the architecture of the engine is the proven American V8 with one single camshaft in the middle. Everything else, including the materials with which this is built, are modern. So you have power steering and power brakes that you could, have, you could argue that those were available at the time too. Correct. But this car has rack and pinion steering. So this is what you would find in a brand new car. You have modern air conditioning and heat. You have an aluminum radiator 
that instead of being cooled down by a fan connected directly to the motor, it has an electric fan, which apart from being more reliable, allows the, the car itself, or well, the sensors in the car to decide when the fan needs to kick in or not. It has an automatic choke, so you don't have to sit there and wait for the car to warm up or start on a whim. And all this, these, this bracing you see, this is all to connect the corners of the car. And there's the same thing underneath, which is actually very uncommon. And what that does, it, it makes the chassis stiffer, which when you build a car with this kind of power and these powerful brakes and this kind of steering, you cannot just leave it untouched because you will, if you build the engine and the brakes to a certain level, the chassis won't live up to what they need to actually perform. And this is uh, what you would find in, in, a, in a track car, which many times translates to a fairly rough ride. But this car, on top of looking spectacular, and you see details like the underside of the hood is painted with the stripe as well. Um, it is very well dialed in, and it is a, an absolute pleasure to drive. I'm not saying it drives like a Cadillac because it is a sports car, but it drives, it goes over bumps, it doesn't have a problem being driven daily. Granted, I never drive this in inclement weather, weather but um, it really is a car that you can put mileage on and not worry about it not being reliable or to damage or to lessen what the car is. Another thing you want to note on how the body work was done, this car was completely taken apart, painted, the different parts were painted and then put together. The way you can tell that is the hardware that keeps the, um, the fender to the car is not painted, is actually stainless steel, it'll never rust. And it's just a way more expensive and way more labor intensive approach to doing body work, but it is the best way to do it. Same thing, we can close this now. Same thing goes for all the stainless steel trim. The right way to do it, which is obviously more expensive, is to remove it all from the car, which means this, 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 everything. A quick way to do it, you just tape it off and you try to get it to overlap at the bottom and around and you paint, but if you put your head close to it, you'll see it. In this case, you can tell there's absolutely a perfect separation between the actual color of the fender and here. And the drip lines, typically, when you do take shortcuts, they, they, they appear pretty, for lack of a better word, caked, because the paint doesn't go in there properly and it's hard to make it look the same as the rest of the car. In this case, it was done right. And it is just, you know, another thing to note, they have bonded together the rocker panels with the front fender and the rear quarter panel. That takes a lot of work and a lot of craftsmanship to make it look like it's seamless because there is a seam here originally and if you look at the original car you'll see it. Uh, it's again expensive and well done. They also, uh, this is something we can change if you prefer the original look, they sort of closed off the original vents that would have been here for a cleaner and sleeker look. I don't mind it. I apologize, a little bit of dust. Um, I don't mind it, but I also don't mind the original look because it is a good look. Again, something, we have a full restoration shop. We can change anything you would want to change on the car. And while we're going this direction, let's go and look at, if you can get a shot real quick of the um, rear speakers and how the interior has been customized. So in this case, the car used to have folding back seats. Um, the person that built the car decided to get rid of those. I oh, know there are power seats, so they won't come up. Um, get rid of those in favor of, I guess, storage area. And uh, as you can see, it has a very custom high-end stereo system to get your tunes going when you're cruising down the road. But we'll get to, interior, to the interior in a second. I wanted to show you the trunk first. The trunk is also operated with a remote. You can actually see the actuator here. You press the remote, it pops the trunk. I now cheated in a sense. Battery in the rear, the reason for that is twofold. One is to keep the engine bay cleaner looking so you don't have the battery sitting on one side. And the other one is for weight distribution. Again, this car was built for performance. So when they did uh, decide where to put the battery like they do in a lot of cases, they put in the back because it's, first of all, it's easier access. Second of all, it's just a better place for it to be. They carpeted the entire trunk, 
trunk is gorgeous. Uh, normally you would have in the stock car, it would just be bare metal with a sheet of vinyl thrown on top of it. Also here we see underside painted just as nicely as the top, all new hardware, all stainless steel. It will never rust. And I mean, this rear valance alone, it's, it, it's, a, it's a thing of beauty. It is absolutely gorgeous. You have your call outs, Mustang, in case somebody didn't know what this car is, if there is such a person still around. A word about, um, we're not gonna see the car underneath, but uh, there are plenty of pictures on the website of how it's built. I do wanna point out a couple things though. It is braced, as I said. It has the power, um, power steer, the modern power steering. It has four wheel disc brakes. The car could have had disc brakes as an option in 1968, um, but they would have been disc brakes from 1968. This has been upgraded to modern disc brakes, front and rear, and it has, if you can grab it from over there and over here, the rims, um, they are this central part here. It looks like they are knockoff wheels, which, you know, it's a great look, but that is the stuff you would find on old, old cars, and it's not up to par with the performance of the car, so it really is a regular, so to speak, bolted on wheel, then has this as a, you know, a, a, as a tribute to what the cars uh, used to be. Um, let's go into interior, I'll open the door for you. You don't see it in this light necessarily, but the uh, door sill actually lights up, the little pony there, and at night you'll see it become blue, it's a nice little touch. I'll walk around the car and get in the driver's side. Okay, so we're in the car now. Uh, I mean, everything is custom. So I could sit here and talk forever, but I wanna point out the, the things that stand out. First thing you'll notice, it's a five speed. That only means, that, that no, doesn't only mean that you have one more gear compared to a regular four speed that you could have found in this car, but also means it's a modern five speed. So it's a great car for cruising long distance um, because the fifth gear, what it does, it allows you to have shorter the, f the first four gear is shorter, so you have performance, but the fifth gear is kind of like a cruising gear, so it really lowers the RPM of the uh, motor, and you can cruise, you get better gas mileage, and you know, lowers the engine noise, and it's just you know, a good way to, um, it's, it's a win-win. Granted, you gotta pay for a new uh, five-speed to get, be put in, but that's uh, a great touch. Um, second, uh, secondly, the dashboard, completely custom gauges, um, showing 1,693 miles on the build. Uh, you have your heat controls here, uh, you have your light controls, so those are still in the same original position. You have a tilt steering wheel, which allows people like me that are freakishly tall to actually fit in this car, much better than what it would have originally. And last but not least, I think it's six or eight ways powers, eight way, I'm told. Great to set up the car however you want it to be. Modern radio, as we said, and not last and not least, Modern air conditioning. You control it from over here. There's a little valve. <coughs> you control it from over here. It's separated from the heat, of course. With that, you control how much. It's basically a thermostat. It tells the AC to come on or not. As we said, very custom interior. A very beautiful and well done custom um, center console. Nice piece of aluminum. You have your seat controls over here. These safety switches are how you control the extra fog lights in the front and the, oh, sorry, the radio and the amplifier. A little space to put your uh, tunes and phone and wallet. And uh, another word on the seats, not only are they power eight-way seats, they are Recaro seats. Recaro is an Italian brand that has been doing uh, and building seats for a long, long time. You might recognize the shape of these seats. It's the same seats you would have found in a, a Ferrari F40. I actually had them on uh, one of my cars as well. They are extremely expensive and great in the sense they're a good balance between uh, comfort, comfort, but also give you side sustain. If you decide to actually have a little bit of fun with the car, you won't be sliding around like you would have in uh, the stock seats. The accruements of the car include things that I have actually never seen in one of these builds. And I think it just goes to show, if you can come on here and show the uh, uh, rear view mirror, it is a self. It is a self 
uh, regulating window as far as glare, so it will turn darker if needed, and it has an inbuilt compass and thermometer, which shows 44 degrees. Thank you very much for late winter. Uh, what you might hear a little buzz, that's electric pump. Another thing that makes this car very usable, it is, uh, there's no need for a mechanical pump. It is an electric pump, so high reliability. And um, maybe if you can get in here, I'll get out, and you shoot a little bit the um, top of, and you can actually, when you're done with that, you can actually see that this one lights yeah. up a little bit better. Um, oh, that might be it. The back of the uh, car and the, uh, of the roof of the car and the headliner are both white. It's a very nice contrast and ties it in with the uh, stripes. Again, very tasteful, not too much in your face, uh, but I think in short, everything about this car is custom and done very, very right. It is um, a very well done Pro Touring. I'm going to close that door and stop the fuel pump. There we go. Sorry about the back end. Um, one last word on the word Pro Touring. Pro Touring or Resto Mod, depending on how you look at it, is a car that performs like you would expect a modern car to do, uh, but has the looks of a cool old car. What that translates into is a very unique, one-of-a-kind car, um, which shouldn't scare you too, because when I say that, a lot of people think, oh my God, what is gonna happen when I need a spare part? All of this is, other than the paint, of course, that has to be done, um, is, you can order it from a catalog. There's parts galore, especially Mustangs uh, between 1964, or late 64 and uh, 1960, Eight, where the first body style generation came out, they sold 1.6 million of them. A lot of them are still on the road and they are among the most loved cars. So there is a whole world of parts out there if you want to customize the car. On that, this being a car that has already been taken away from being a completely original car, which to some people has value, um, you can customize it to your liking. We have a full restoration shop, as I said, you want the car to be black with white stripes or black with off gray stripes, a really cool modern look with maybe a little bit of a red stripe. We can do it all. You want a different motor in it. You want it uh, white with blue polka dots. I don't recommend it, but we can do it. Uh, rims uh, are an easy swap and can you know, give the car your own personal touch. Interior work, whatever it is that you prefer. I wouldn't personally mess too much with the car because I love it, the way it's built and the way it drives. I wish I could convey with a video uh, how great the car performs on the road, that is for you to decide uh, after you find room for this car in your life. Hope you guys enjoyed this little presentation and I guess the last thing we have to do is just to hear the little rumble.